I've just up, uh, <coughs> uploaded the Mitsubishi Mayhem video and I'm very pleased to say um, 11,500 views in the first 24 hours. That's quite good for my channel and hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of comments and that's not surprising. And I have to come back with a rebuttal because, I mean, I love the stuff, I live for the stuff, so this is going to be a little bit of a rant. But, um, okay, I want to talk about fanboys i want to talk about fan let me start with that i didn't say no let, let, let me let me start here how do you know if you're a fanboy you know if you're a fanboy of anything if you behave like this there is a guy south african guy his name is peter he is a photographer he likes nikons no let, let me rephrase that he doesn't like he he loves nikons no, 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 no. He, he's obsessed with Nick. No, still not. Um, he's married. He has sexual relations. I, I don't know what it is. He once said to me, because I said that the new A7S Sony was really a remarkable camera. I quote, Sony are only good for making TVs. Canon only make printers, only, can only make good printers. He is so obsessed with Nikons that he walks around in his world of photography. You can, you can imagine how this person thinks. Facts do play a part in choosing a good camera, vehicle, insurance company, as well as a good feeling. The two things kind of go hand in hand, don't they? I'm not excluding the good feeling part. But good feeling can so, so get in the way of good choices. And typically, with this person, with the Nikon thing, it had become absurd. And he was missing out on some outstanding equipment made by not just Sony and Canon, but what about Panasonic and what about Leica and what about all of the other great camera makers? In the Pajiro video, Fanboys, those of you who think like Mitsubishi because you own a Mitsubishi and you like your Mitsubishi, you have automatically assumed that when I said that I was disappointed in the Pajero, which was the third generation Pajero, that A, I don't like all Mitsubishi vehicles, B, I don't like any Pajeros, C, my, and somebody used the word vitriol against the Pajero, it was not against, if there was any vitriol at all, it's a bit of a strong word, but okay, it was against the way the owners reacted, not about the car. Yes, the vehicle was a disappointment. Why was it a disappointment? Because I expected better. Why did I expect better? Sorry, I'm raving. Why did I expect better? Because I had driven the second generation Pajero. I had driven the V6 and I had driven the 2.8. I was commissioned, it was a three day shoot for a South African production company that was working for Mitsubishi Motors South Africa and the film was actually used internationally about the Pajero. And I was so impressed with that vehicle. I was driving it at 180 kilometers an hour on curving tar roads. And I remember, and I actually had it in four-wheel drive. I put it in because it's the super select four-wheel drive, which I've always claimed is a bad idea to have two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive and four-wheel drive lock-up as a choice. The reason why it's a bad idea is because two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive not locked up. The, what advantage have I got in two-wheel drive over four-wheel drive locked up? Fuel consumption. How much? I challenge you to measure it that's how small it is okay but what about the safety advantages of four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive huge so why offer your customers a less safe option why marketing and the one thing Mitsubishi has been so good at especially in the early days of Pajero their marketing was superb you, I compared it at the time with Land Rover Discovery, Discovery 1. 
it was better in every environment than a Discovery 1, apart from very rough off-road, where the Discovery 1 was very good and probably best in class. In fact, I'd say definitely best in class. On an open road, tar road, going fast, better than the Prado. Gravel roads, Prado was as good, but not necessarily better. Diesel Pajero is more powerful. It had so much going for it. But I didn't mention it in the previous video because I wasn't talking about the second generation Pajero. I wasn't talking about Mitsubishi as a brand. I was talking about that specific vehicle on my review and the reaction to it. As a fanboy, now if you got uptight with me, oh Mitsubishi, oh, but that's a fanboy thing that you were doing. You were looking at the world like this. I didn't criticize Mitsubishi as a motor vehicle, as a manufacturer, and I didn't. What comments? What about the Delicia, the Delica? I don't know the Delica. I've never driven one. I know of it. I've had a look at them. They look interesting, don't they? They do look interesting. If somebody said to me, what about the Delica, and expected an answer, I would say, well, I've heard good things. And they have some similarities between the second generation, not the third generation Pajero. I would therefore assume that they've probably got quite a bit going for them. I'm not going to automatically dispel them because Pajero, uh, Mitsubishi, made one particular vehicle that I was very disappointed in. It doesn't mean that every vehicle that they've ever built is disappointing. Only a fanboy will react like that. And if you've had good experiences with certain vehicles, even the third generation Pajero, then great, good, keep it. If you love it, keep it. Don't listen to me. Don't, well, let's put it this way. You listen to me, but don't, I'm not saying get rid of it. I'm just saying as it happened there, I was given this vehicle and I was disappointed in it. A lot of people have commented and said, yes, but um, you wouldn't take your your, your standard uh, Toyota Land Cruiser on canning stock. Wrong, actually. You could take a stock standard 70 series Land Cruiser and do canning stock every month for 10 years. And you would be replacing shock absorbers quite often and shock springs quite often, other than that. But that's what it's designed for. Imagine doing the school run in a 76 series Land Cruiser every day for 10 years. You could do it, but it's not designed for the school run. The Pajero is. The Pajero is trying to be a lot of things, and that's the challenge with that particular segment of vehicle. Land Rover Discovery, Prado, Pajero, that, there are lots of them. In that segment, they're trying to be mum's shopping cars. Most of them are quite good at it. They're trying to be, they're, they're SUVs, which means sports utility vehicles, they're trying to do that too, weekend out. And those who you know, push the boundaries, like taking them to the Namib with a full family, I admit, pushing the boundaries. How well are they gonna perform? In that environment, it was lousy. Now, the other vehicles on that particular route through Namibia, were they standard vehicles? Yes, a lot of them. Some of the fanboys. What about the second generation Prado, uh, Pajero, Pajero, on that trip? How did it do? It did very, very well. It's a better vehicle. I know it's a better vehicle. It still has very limited wheel travel. That's why it is so good on the open road and very good on gravel. But not great off road because it doesn't have the wheel travel. That vehicle is better than the third generation in almost every respect. Third generation Pajero had a nicer engine. Yes, it did. Nicer seats, hmm, maybe. Nice interior, eh, not really. Uh, I wasn't as comfortable. The, the, the third generation wasn't as comfortable as the second generation had a better back seat. Um, was it a more versatile vehicle? The second generation Pajero was a far more versatile vehicle. Was it as comfortable on the open road as the third generation? No. Big difference? Not really. And if you had to say, which one of these are you going to take to canning stock in stock standard form? I take a second generation without question. 
It's built better. It's stronger. Vehicles were built better in those days. They weren't designed by accountants. Modern vehicles are designed by accountants, every single one of them. Even a Land Cruiser 70 series. That's why the springing is so, you know, standard springing is so hard, etc., etc. I could go on and on. <clears throat> and yes, it does to make it palatable. Not to enable it to do these amazing trips, but just to make it palatable for the driver, yes, we do a lot of modifications. And I know for a fact that if you take a Pajero and you give it a couple of inches lift and you do a bit of tweaks and you take off some of the plastic rubbish, it makes a good off-road and overland vehicle. It does. If you would like to be part of what I do and help me make more videos, support me on Patreon. Click the Patreon button on the screen now.